I mean, yeah, um, there, there isn't a feeling like it. I mean, you kind of saw the energy that I had, maybe a little bit too much in the first half. Um, but no, um, the Quad City showed out, and it was, it was just an incredible experience. Yeah, you know, it's important because we're, we were in a, to a ton of those games last year where, you know, we really weren't making the shots that we've been making. You know, we've been shooting it well the last few games. And those are the games you have to grind out with your defense, with your rebound, and with, you know, feeding the big guy. Uh, they couldn't really stop him. So, you know, I'm really proud of the way that we did grind that out. A huge shout out to the crowd. I think that was absolutely huge in that. Um, when Drew hit those threes, it was some of the loudest I've really heard in my college career. So that was special. And, um, you know, I'm proud of the guys for responding. I don't think so. No, this is this is number one. This takes the cake for sure. <laughs> I think we made a ton of really good adjustments. Um, you know, their point guard was making a ton of plays, and we tried to get the ball out of his hands. You know, um, I think. Coaches did a great job of fixing things, of finding their weaknesses, and we really exposed them. And you know, I think there's still things that we can clean up. We gave up 68, and a lot of them, you know, were mistakes that we can correct. So uh, there's a lot of positive things to take away from today. And, and like I said, just really proud of the guys for the way they responded to you know a lot of adversity in that game. You know, I, I told him right before that, um, I called the set where it's kind of me and O on the side together, and I told him I was going to, I'm, I'm going to hit you. Like, I, I'm reading this, I'm coming off, they're flying at me, I'm going to hit you. And uh, honestly, I didn't think it was a good pass. He just made a heck of a play on it. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, he called the play, and um, he threw it up, so I had to go get it. So uh, that's, that's about it, yeah. How, we we kind of looked at each other after, and we both were pretty hyped, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, they bring a ton of energy. You know, Drew knows how to win games. He's been doing that for four years in college. So proud of the way that, you know, he didn't play a whole lot early in the game and then was still engaged in the game. He's engaged in the huddles and then, you know, comes out, makes huge plays defensively and, and hitting those threes. And, um, you know, Sadu was great. You know, he, he did what he does. Um, he, he got used to the, the speed early in that game. And then by the end, you know, he's making play after play, uh, protecting the rim, just doing a lot of really good things. So I'm proud of those guys. And they, they definitely contributed to a big win. I mean, um, playing in Wharton Fieldhouse, uh, I kind of expected it to be kind of crazy. But I mean, the Quad City showed out, and it was it was unreal. Um, just one of the loudest crowds I've played in front of, and I mean, it was just a lot of fun. I'm going to remember it forever. Yeah, you know, I think it makes uh, it throws me back to Sioux Falls when we played there my freshman year. Um, similar to that, but you know, it was a lot closer game, and the, the crowd absolutely played a huge factor in getting us that win. And um, you know, I'm not opposed to driving up here every game for a home game. Yeah, like I said, you know, we weren't making the shots we normally make. Um, I couldn't get much to fall. Josh wasn't getting anything to fall. Price, and you know, the last few games we've been on fire. So when those shots aren't falling, that's when, you know, you find out how good your team is. Because it's easy to win when, you know, we're making 23s in a game. But when we're only hitting a couple, you know, that's when you learn how to grind it out. You have to get stops down the stretch. You have to execute, make plays, make your free throws. And, you know, we didn't make our free throws in the first half. And, um, you know, we're a really good free throw shooting team. And the way that we made eight or 10 in a row to finish that game. I mean, that's what winning teams do. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Questions for Coach. Grant, can you talk about the adjustment you made late in the game to keep number eight from getting the basket? He was really hurting us. I mean, he's a terrific player. Uh, I've been really impressed with him, Pat, on film. Uh, they're doing a good job with how they're running their actions and how they're setting him up. So. Uh, we just had to try to take his space away. And the only way you do that with a crafty, bullet quick guy like that is you gotta, you gotta double him. And that's risky because they have pick and pop three point shooters, they have screen roll guys. They've got a really good team. They have seven guys averaging double figures. So uh, <coughs> we made a decision we're gonna double him and get him to throw it somewhere else. And then we gotta scramble. And then we've gotta get the rebound. Uh, and so, 
he wasn't as effective. And then we also did it at full court. Uh, Sadu was really good up there. And Drew was really good in that sequence. And Price and Peyton and Owen were, were terrific at, in that stretch. Because when you extend your defense, you're vulnerable. Uh, especially with a team that has that kind of quickness and not many shot makers. So you have to be able to get back if they do you know, break the press, if they do throw it ahead, if they do hit middle and throw opposite. And uh, a couple of times you dribbled into the trap box, which is exactly what you want, because then you bring your defense up, you trap them at the 10 second line. And what, I think we stepped out of bounds at one time. It was just a terrific job of applying intense pressure without fouling. Grant, it seems like every, well, we've only played four games so far, right? But we're always talking about Drew and Sadie and their ability to impact the game. Um, it really showed late. Well, you know, I think I think Peyton said it the best with, with regard to Drew. I mean, he's the all-time winning his program, winning his player, and that program's history. Moorhead State. I mean, they've had some really good players. They won 27 games last year. I've coached at that level. I know how hard it is to win 27 games. You need a guy like him that can engineer a victory. All right. He started slow throughout the summer. He just kept getting better. He just kept grinding. Instead of making excuses, he just came in and studied. Okay, I got, I got to, this is all new. Okay, yeah, I'm an old guy, but it's all new. Uh, Sadu relies more on his innate basketball instincts and his length and his athleticism and his skill set. He still is really green when it comes to knowing where to go and what to do. And sometimes he'll, you know, he'll just break a playoff and I'll be somewhat upset with him, but I, you know, he'll say, you know, I, I flashed because I thought I was open. And you never, want to, you never want your guys to lose that. You want them to think for themselves. And, and he's really good in those situations. So those guys provide athleticism, they provide toughness, they both can score, and they both can defend. Defensively, can you, can you maybe just speak to how much being a, putting on a good defensive performance is uh, like scheme versus just like the effort of like just wanting to wanting to be a good defensive? You know, today I think it was more effort, especially in the second half. You know, in the first half, you know, we were okay. I mean, I, you know, I thought we played pretty hard, but we held them to thirty-four percent in the second half. That's a really good team to hold to thirty-four percent. So you have to be a connected group. And that's what we talked about at halftime. Okay, we have to be more connected defensively. Because I felt like we were going to be better offensive. I mean, we, we don't miss seven free throws, typically. You know, we don't turn the ball over 10 times. I mean, they were uncharacteristic numbers for our team at halftime. And we're still right there. So if we take care of business defensively, make some adjustments, and then execute, and, and actually, we just moved and shared the ball, and we were able to score in transition. We didn't really execute our half-court offense very well. Uh, but what we did do was attack. And so when you're coming down a stretch, we're in the double bonus. So everybody that gets fouled goes, no one he's going to make. He's got two shots. And that's a big difference from having to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Frank, this is kind of the first game you guys face a little bit of adversity. And, and the response, what does that say about this team? Well, I think it speaks to our depth. You know. Josh was not himself. He took a spill in the first half, hurt his wrist, tried to play. He didn't have it, you know, and he's, he's the toughest guy, as, as tough a guy as I've ever been around. So if he can't go, he can't go. Somebody else has to go. And Price was in there and didn't shoot it as well, but Price played great. You know, you look at Price, he's a plus 23 for the game when he was on the floor. So he played defense, he rebounded, he moved the ball, he executed. You know, and hopefully Josh's, you know, injury will, will be taken care of relatively quickly. We'll have to see. I realized that yesterday you, you talked about neutral site games and what you'd like to do, what you might do. Uh, but uh, obviously there was a hunger here to see you, your guys and, and with the local hook. But would you consider maybe a game a year in the state of Iowa elsewhere besides Carver? You know, you know, Beth and I have talked about that. Uh, you know, I... We obviously love playing in Carver, uh, but we have an incredible fan base over here. We've got an incredible fan base 
in Des Moines. Uh, Peyton referenced the Sioux Falls game a couple of years ago. We've done it. We've gone up there twice. You know, we've got a ton of fans up up north that I mean, just respond to our team in a way that's just incredible. Like you saw how they responded to our guys. They want autographs. They want pictures. They want to high five you. Same thing happens up in Sioux Falls, and I think we'll have a similar experience over in Kansas City with our fans over in that part of the state. Uh, so, you know, that's something we can talk about. I mean, I think, you know, from a business perspective, you know, we've got people that will make those decisions. Uh, but, you know, I think overall, if you were at this game, you know, you'd be in favor of that, obviously. Friend. Yeah, I think when he got his tea, I think I got a sense of it. <laughs> but he came back and controlled his emotions in the second half and dominated. So uh, there's no question that he was going to play. You know, as I said, you know, practice yesterday, he was gassed. Uh, you know, so I felt like if we could get 20 minutes out of him, we could get 18 minutes out. You know, is, and is it going to have to be in and out, in and out, in and out? We got his second foul on the tee, so I, re I rested him most of the rest of that half. So uh, I don't remember taking him out too much in the second half. All right, thanks, Frank. Appreciate it, guys.